Robert here with Fiddleback Forge. As you can see, some amazing knives that we're putting up for Fiddleback Friday. The purpose of this video is to show you what all those knives look like in hand. So if they show up in your mailbox next week, you already know what to expect. Now we've made some changes to the way we do some of the previews for those of you that follow us along on Blade Forum. Uh, you'll know from the video last week, we were having some difficulties getting photos to show up. So now we're just linking you off to the website where we always have a preview with photos and specs and everything else. I usually go over that at the end of the video. Since we made some changes, I'll go over a little bit of it now. If you happen to also have received the email newsletter with the preview in that, uh, you'll notice there's an extra photo of each knife in that. And you may also notice that two of the knives from MW Steelworks are listed as sheath included, uh, but it's not actually a carry sheath. It's more of a slip. So it's one of these right here. It's really meant for uh, storage and to help keep the knife protected uh, during shipping. Just something extra that Marcus does. Uh, but I would not recommend throwing that in your pocket with a sharp knife inside of it. So now that we got all of that out of the way, it's time to do the in-hand portion, which is the whole reason that you like to show up for this video. And of course, the whole reason that you subscribe where you're watching it. So I thought I would give out some kind of awards this week for which knife would win a certain award uh, if you had to make me choose something for that award. So a little, something a little fun to break it up with. So this one would win the award or the competition rather if you made me choose a single knife, kind of like they do on those, those survival shows where they make you naked and put you outside uh, so bugs will bite up all your bits. One of those kind of shows. So if you made me pick a single sharp object to take with me on one of those adventures, this would be it. All right, here it is. The Beast. The choice for one of those TV shows that sticks you out in the middle of nowhere by yourself, possibly with or without clothing, trying to get some ratings. That's right, this is what you would want to take with you. And no matter if you look good on the show or not, that damn sure would. This is the Camp Knife, of course, custom shop version. Fiddleback Forge, of course, rocking some really sweet desert ironwood and Tiffany blue on those big pins, as well as the pinstripes on that natural liner. Gorgeous is probably the word you were looking for, and beastie is probably the other word you were looking for when talking about the blade. This is, of course, the 3V blade from the MidTech model, and that thing is ready to do some business, and it is an absolute beast and as far as these blades go in the 3v steel uh, for the camp knives andy has told me he has a handful of them so you'll see a handful of these uh, coming along the way in the next several weeks or months uh, but that's it after that um, now that's not to say the camp won't be made anymore in the full handmade version uh, with an A2 steel or an 8670, something like that. Uh, but if you've been looking for a camp knife or uh, the old mid-tech knives, which aren't made anymore, uh, this is your only shot to be able to get them as if Andy uses the 3V blades on one of the custom shop models. Like I said, only a handful of those are going to be coming out. Uh, that is one of them, of course. And just for, uh, you know, the sake of comedy, uh, let's put up the Petite Wisu from Fiddleback Forge as well. This is a newer model. Uh, if you remember, there's only been a couple of these made so far. This one is rocking some pretty nice uh, African blackwood uh, with some natural liners. He tossed on the uh, the blue Trinity pinout as well as the blue pinstripes on there to really give it a pop of color. Uh, the African blackwood, in my experience, the one knife that I personally have with it, um, it did lighten up and start showing the grain a lot more. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a characteristic of just the piece that I had or if all African blackwood has it. Uh, but it's absolutely gorgeous wood. Very dark figure, as you can tell right there. Just beautiful, beautiful knife. This one's rocking CPM 154, uh, which is a rarity with Fiddleback Forge knives, or at least not around a lot. But the comedy of this is when I put these two models together. One of the smallest Fiddleback Forge models uh, next to the largest Fiddleback Forge model. That's pretty cool. So Petit Wisu, if you're looking for an EDC and you're not trying to conquer the world that you need the camp for, well, Petit Wisu might be the one for you. Right. And speaking of EDC knives, as well as a uh, 
traditional Fiddleback Forge model, the Handyman, which is always a super popular model for good reason. Uh, you can tell that it is very versatile, very handy, as it were. Full four finger grip on that bad boy right there. This one's rocking 8670 on the steel. And the Glacial Jade G10, classic. Fiddleback has made quite a few of these in the past. You haven't seen one in a while though. And uh, I, for one, really enjoy the fact that uh, this one's made a comeback, especially on the Handyman model, which I'm a fan of. Taper Tang on there, super sweet. Balance point right there, at that, right there in front of that second set of pins. 8670 steel, super tough. It's gonna get that nice patina on it over time, which is gonna be really, really nice with that Glacial Jade. Very, very cool knife. Handyman, Fiddleback Forge. So in between these two in size and newer model like the Petite Wee Sue is this bad boy right here. This is the Bayou. We've only had, I think, two of these so far. Really cool design. I'm hoping that uh, Andy makes a lot more of these because I think this is going to be a very popular uh, design uh, for bushcrafting just because it's uh, very user friendly and shape and design and also size is very versatile as well. Um, rocking almost a five inch blade, four and three quarter inch on the blade. Uh, so it's got a lot of usability in the blade. This open handle design means it's comfortable no matter how you hold it. And it's also comfortable no matter what size hand you have. And also the nice indexing with the finger guard um, makes it user friendly in that it feels uh, very confidence inspiring. So uh, you're not worried about your fingers slipping up on the blade or anything like that. You get a nice good grip on it. And this one is rocking that black salt vintage micarta. Really cool stuff. And when you throw on those blue pins and that blue pin stripe right there, doesn't get much better than that, except the fact that it's got a tapered tang. And even with that longer blade on there, you can see the balance points right in between those uh, two sets of pins right there. So it uh, feels very light and nimble in hand, but very controllable at the same time. Doesn't want to fall out of your hand, doesn't want to fall forward. Uh, just great balance. Really nice knife design, really digging that one. That's the Bayou Fiddleback Forge. This is the JB Knife Works Eclipse model, which is one of my favorite that Joey does. It just has a really sexy kind of sleek design and look about it. Uh, but I also just like the general handle shape, look and feel, the functionality. I like the upswept tip. I like the pointy surgical kind of feel to it. Um, almost like a fillet knife meets a everyday carry knife i just really dig this model uh, we've had quite a few of them roll through but none quite like this one so this is rocking uh, some vintage bone on the handle and it's gorgeous i like the yellow highlights that he put on there but the bone handle definitely the star of the show on that and that blade can you get any cleaner than that well it's 8670 steel, so it's not going to stay super duper shiny like what you see there. But what it is going to do is give a super nice patina that's going to make that bone stand out even more. And it's a great steel. So really cool knife right there. JB Knife Works Eclipse model and vintage bone. I'll try to give you a little closer look at that bone because it's freaking gorgeous. Really cool stuff. Uh, but even though it's bone, he threw in a taper tang on there. So... Uh, it's not super handle heavy uh, like a lot of bone handle knives are. So balance points right there in between those two sets of pins. A lot of times the bone handle knives get real super heavy in hand um, and can make you kind of lose touch with what the tip of the knife is doing. I think that's a nice balance point given that tip shape so you can really just feel and control everything that's going on with it. And uh, we got another train. The, the awesome train is rolling in. Can you hear it? The awesome train. JB Knife Works Eclipse model. All right, so a brand new model from Joey with JB Knife Works is this gorgeous beast right here. This guy right here is the big LC, not to be confused with the little LC that we showed you last week. Uh, it's slightly larger. I like both, but I, if you had to make me pick, I would pick the big LC for me only because it's got a tad more room in the handle and for my hands it just feels right now if your hands are smaller uh, i think it's going to feel good as well because this is an open enough handle design that it's not locking your hands into one position and gives you some move room to move around on it so uh, but for extra large mitts it fits perfect really locked in uh, this is a very similar blade 
or uh, sorry, handle shape to the uh, JB Knife Works uh, Delta model, um, but the blade's a little bit shorter. I like this blade shape and the size of this blade shape with this handle. Uh, it gives you a little bit more handle. I just feel like you get a lot more leverage on the blade for a daily carry knife, and I dig that. Uh, this one's rocking that uh, cross cut uh, black canvas micarta, which I really like. And uh, some lime pinstripes, give it a little color. Taper Tang's a nice touch as well, 8670 on the steel. Really cool knives from JB Knife Works this week. And this one, the regular LC, is uh, on the site right now if you like that model. I don't think I got to show that in hand either. Now, I don't feel uh, super cramped like this isn't comfortable. I just have a little more room on the big LC, which I like. But if you, you know, got a glove size of medium or large in that range, you may like this one a little bit more. So that's the regular LC. So pretty cool models. This one's on the site right now. You don't have to wait for Fiddleback Friday for that. And uh, you can go ahead and grab that now. But that one, you got to wait for Friday. Now, this next one is probably going to get the Just Want to Hold It Award. Okay. Think pudgy little puppy cute little kitten, fat baby. Think fat baby. You just want to hold it. Here it is. This guy right here is chunky. But I don't mean chunky in a bad way. I mean chunky in a good way. I really, really like this model, and I think I would really dig carrying this every day, to be super honest with you. This is the MW Steelworks Old Crow. And it's rocking some desert ironwood, some thick Tiffany blue G10 liners. Really cool. Two inch blade, five and three quarters overall. So this is my pick for knife I'd like to try that I don't currently have. So as far as models go, this thing is cool. It's, it's, I mean, chunky is the best way to describe it, but I like the way that he's tapered down the approach right here on the Ricasso. It makes you not feel like you're holding a super chunky hand um, handle when you're actually using the thing, uh, which is nice. is a super nice touch. It's got great indexing on the bottom. Just makes it feel like it's staying in place. I mean, your pinky just tunks in right behind it super comfortably uh, and almost feels like it's actually giving you a little grip on the backside of the pommel. It's kind of weird uh, how it does that because normally big chunky on a small knife is not my idea of a good time this one has changed my mind on that i'd really like to try this one out hope you do too uh, pretty cool knife uh, rocking 8670 530 seconds 8670 as well because why wouldn't you go thick everything about this knife is thick and it's cool i'm really digging that hope to see a lot more of these so this mw steelworks old crow all right another one from mw steelworks this is the vireo model and this one has some pretty cool details on it. I'll start with the blade. This is a Sanmai blade, V Toku 2, Japanese steel for your sharpened edge that's in the center, stainless steel cladding on the outside. So you get the best of both worlds. You get strength and a great working edge that you can see right there. Traditional Sanmai, uh, normally used in the past in Japanese sword making. Uh, because in Japan, they did not have, for many years, a lot of good steel. So they would put the good steel in the center, surrounded by other steel on the outside. That way, they got to make more uh, out of the little bit of steel that they had. But now, you get two great steels. It's just more of a look and kind of call back to that traditional uh, style of sword making and knife making from Japan. And this one's rocking maple with a deep, deep ocean resin on there. Absolutely beautiful handle material i hope the movement that's in that is coming through on camera as much as it does in person absolutely gorgeous really cool little edc knife right there feels good in the hand and it's got a little bit of a squared off feel so you kind of always know where it is and where it's facing uh, without looking at it which is a great great thing for an edc knife too so this next knife probably would get the award not, not even probably definitely gets the award for the absolute sexiest knife of the week wow that is insanely sexy right there that knife is awesome 
looking like a tiger stepping out of the forest, all confident and stuff, ready to eat a baboon or something. I don't, I don't know. Well, this is the Grizzly model from Warlander Enterprises. As cheesy as I got with the intro there. Uh, the knife more than makes up for any disservice I did introducing it because it's freaking gorgeous, as you can tell. Banshee Ridgeback Jakarta is that handle material. Don't try to say that three times fast or do. That'd be funny, actually, if you tried that. But anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous knife. The Grizzly is a fantastic model. Definitely a favorite of mine from Amy with Warlander Enterprises. Um, one of the features that always just stands out to me, and I've talked about it before. Sorry if you've heard me say it before. But it's one of those designs that if you told me would work, I wouldn't believe you. Because it's got a kind of a miniature thumb ramp right here. And then it's got a full-blown thumb ramp up here. Two thumb ramps. Who does that? That doesn't work. Well, you'd be wrong because I was wrong. And uh, that works. It works really well. It's amazing how comfortable that knife is when you hold it in different variations. Absolutely gorgeous. Got a nice little kind of sharpening choil right here as well if you dig that. Super sexy swedge at the top. Beautiful hammer texture. The handle material is perfect. Everything about this knife is gorgeous. Even the sheath is gorgeous. Let me show you that. Because, of course, Amy's knives come with sheaths as well, custom fit to each blade, because she is a fantastic leather worker as much as she is a fantastic knife maker. You don't get that with every maker, but you do get it with Warlander Enterprises. And uh, whew, it's almost a shame to put that in a sheath to cover any of it up. But you can't just walk around like this. It'll freak people out, right? Absolutely gorgeous knife. Amy knocked it out of the park. She's not done. She's got another cool one i got to show you, too. All right, next up for Warlander Enterprises is this little beauty right here. This is the Fletcher model. Definitely a favorite of mine in the EDC sizes from Warlander. And this one is freaking gorgeous, as you can tell. Uh, the star of the show is going to be this JG10. Now, JG10 takes on, usually, whatever color is beneath it. Now, in this case... It throws you for a loop a little bit because what's underneath is forest green pinstripe, okay? Now, you would think that would make the JG10 green. Now, furthermore, usually jade has a slight yellow tint to it anyway. So, you would think, well, yellow and green, how in the hell does that make this smoky gray color? I don't have any idea, but I like it. That's a gorgeous color, real nice depth to it. Real nice shading to it. That's just cool. That's a cool handle material. I'm looking forward to seeing more of that as well. Um, I already showed you the Handyman from Fiddleback Forge and the Glacial JG10. That's with a blue liner underneath. Now, how a forest green liner makes it turn this gray color, I don't know. But it's a smoky little masterpiece. It's really awesome. So, this is the Fletcher Warlander Enterprises. And, of course, it comes with a sheath as well. And on this one, Amy chose to go with a pocket style with the pocket clip. Uh, so you can carry that right in your front pocket. And that shape matches your shape of your jeans pocket very nicely, by the way. Pretty cool little touch. So that is the Fletcher. Bam. Super sexy, smoky, somehow JG10. If you forced me to fight a wild animal, this is the knife I would take. So if you need to be as mean as a rattlesnake and go out here and fight some wild animals, this is the W.A. Searles Rattler model. We've had one before. Man, this thing absolutely just locks in. Thumb ramp right there in the right spot. Just feels super good at putting the pressure forward. And it, the way it locks in, that's why I say, hey, if you're going to fight a wild animal out in the woods, you want this one. Because the way it locks into your hand, you're just a lot less likely to drop it when things get super real. But in all seriousness, this is a really cool knife. Very cool for the outdoors. And it feels just beefy. It's just got a beefy feel all the way around. Rattler model is pretty cool. Uh, vintage bicolor linen micarta right there. At least I think it was linen. I'll have to double check that. Well, you see it on the screen. You know if it's linen or not. But I can tell you it's vintage. And I can tell you it's bicolor right there and I can tell you it's got a tapered tang and I can tell you that it's freaking awesome. So there you go, W.A. Searles, Rattler model. That thing is just an absolute beast, feels great. It just feels really great in the hand. Like a, like a, like a handshake 
from a strong man. Just just like like he's telling you the truth, looking you in the eye. That thing is cool. And then Alan from W.A. Searles goes a completely opposite direction on you and gets a little bit thin, a little bit dainty, and takes you out of the roughneck woods and right into the kitchen in style, in Japanese style at that. So this is the petty knife, and uh, this thing's rocking kind of a, a mini Santuku kind of feel to it uh, in a traditional sense with, with kind of the octagonal style on the handle shaping. And this one right here is vintage micarta rod. So I hope that it comes through where you can actually see uh, the swirl where it's actually wrapped into a rod shape. And then it's actually shaped out square, which gives you really cool kind of dark colors on the corners when it's finished out. So really cool knife. Uh, we've had a few of these. The people that have picked these up say it's an absolute favorite for them to use in their kitchen. You can definitely see why. Uh, rocking the hidden tang, of course, as well. Really, really cool design. I'm digging it, but definitely on the total opposite end of the spectrum of the Rattler and that big beast back there. So pretty cool. And I think this next one is probably going to win the award for being super shanktastic. That's right. It is definitely not what you want to see your wife holding if you came home late with glitter and cheap perfume all over your shirt. There's a lot going on with this little thing right here. So this is Duckhead Forge rocking the flip model, which you've seen before. This thing is like a fillet knife meets an ice pick, meets a prison shank, meets an everyday carry, meets a self-defense weapon. Like this thing is like all over the place and none of those places at the same time. Pretty cool little knife though, if you ask me. So it's rocking some rose maple right there and it's cut in a way where it's got this real cool wavy thing going on with the grain uh, instead of being against the grain or with the grain it's kind of halfway between giving a really really cool effect right there i like how he's filled in uh, the natural gaps in the maple as well making those kind of pop and uh, the liners on this got black liners but then pink pinstripes with a thin white pinstripe which really rocks it with this right here I for one kind of wish I would have had this last night when I was breaking down a rotisserie chicken because I kind of feel like that's perfect for that. But hey, your use may vary. What you would use it for may vary as well. But I think we can both agree, really cool knife. Threw in a taper tang on there. Dusty's killing it with that. Duckhead Forge flit. Oak Mulgee Knife Company, absolutely killing it this week. So this one right here is the Savage Model and Boina Burl is what you're looking at right there. Really great wood and obviously gorgeous as well. Really nice colors, really nice texture. Almost looks like, you know, it's it's almost like if you put Sedona, Arizona in a, in a handle. That's what you would have right there. Very cool knife. Uh, kind of a larger size on the uh, bushcraft scale. Not super big, not unwieldy at all. Uh, really nice size, five inch blade. Uh, nine and a quarter inch overall, absolutely gorgeous. Um, 8670, super tough steel as well. Grinds beautiful on there as well. Okamogi Knife Company just killing it this week. That knife is absolutely gorgeous. Now, unfortunately, if your life is a lot like mine and you don't get outdoors as much as you'd like to, uh, you probably gear a little more toward the EDC size knives as opposed to the larger bushcraft knives. And that's where this bad boy right here really comes into play. This is the Shiloh model, one of my favorites from Okmogi Knife Company, and I'm really digging this one. It's got smoky oak on the handle materials, just over a three inch blade, super functional, super nice. As far as an EDC size knives, it's got a little bit of a full figured handle, as you can see there. Got a little thickness, but it's not ridiculous at all. It's not, it's not overly thick. I think if you like your EDCs where you can actually do a lot of hard work with them as well and you're holding them for a long period of time, this one's going to be nice uh, because that rounder, fuller handle uh, usually has less hot spots. So pretty cool knife. I like the Shiloh, probably one of my favorite models from Okmogi. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. And that smoky oak on that handle with the blue accents, man, doesn't get much better than that right there. Uh, but let's go ahead and get on to a little uh, a little Japanese flair. Let's let's call this the Japanese Yakuza Award, okay? So you you're wearing pinstripe suits during the day, 
but you got a few tattoos underneath. Here, here it is. Here it is. Well, I'm running out of room, but we still got room for some pretty cool knives from Josh Fisher, Edge Knife Works. And this little bad boy right here has a lot to love. Really cool pinstriped handle material. Really nicely matched up, as you can see there. Just really cool. But one thing I'm loving about this one, now this is W2 with a Hamon, uh, but it's also interesting in the fact that it's not, it doesn't have a grind on both sides. So it's kind of a chisel grind. It's totally, well, not totally, not totally grindless on this side, just doesn't have the primary grind. Now he does have the secondary grind uh, that he sharpened out on this side. Uh, so it doesn't make it a true chisel grind, but we're going to call it, let's just call it a single side grind because that's still accurate. Now this side, uh, you've got a hollow primary grind and the sharpened edge as well. So this is going to be for a right hand user, right? Because as you're slicing through, uh, it's kind of going to move material away on this right hand side. Uh, so most of the time when you're holding it with your right hand cutting, that's what's going to, to do that for you. But I love the fact that he stepped outside the box. Uh, on such a small EDC knife and said, you know what? It doesn't need a grind on both sides. just needs a sharpened edge. And uh, it's different. And it's small enough where it doesn't feel like unbalanced or weird with it being that way. It's almost like you actually don't even notice it at first when you first pick it up. And then you're like, okay, wow. It only has a grind on one side. I really dig this. I hope to see a few more like this. Um, I'd actually like to try one of these in my everyday carry lineup. Uh, just to see how I kind of like a single side grind like that. Pretty cool knife. Now let's just go with the minis, but go up a little size as we go through. This is the mini Ronin right here uh, in a exclusive mustard micarta. You're not going to see that one anywhere else. I really dig that color. So if you're looking for something kind of interesting and different that nobody else has, that one right there is going to do it for you. Uh, the Mini Ronin to me, like I don't know if many of you guys remember the knives from Mr. Dylan Fletcher with Fletcher Knives. Uh, this reminds me of his uh, small like 24-7 model, I think it was. Really cool model. I was a huge fan of that. Now, obviously, this is not a copy of that. It's uh, quite a bit different, really, if you really get to look at it. And the styles are totally different. It's just one of those things that kind of reminded me of old Dylan. Wishing Dylan was making some knives these days so we could feature him as well. But uh, I'm going to settle for this little bad boy right here because I'm kind of digging it. I like the size. Tuck the pinky in on the back there. I can actually get four fingers on it if I'm holding it like that. Kind of more of a power, power stroke grip. Uh, really cool edge knife works from Mr. Joshua Fisher. Mini Ronin. So we've got a variation comparison here. So... This is the Edge Knife Work Huntsman model on the bottom and the Warncliffe Huntsman on the top. As you can tell, the Warncliffe Huntsman has more of a, a Warncliffe style blade on it, whereas the regular Huntsman, well, uh, it doesn't. So there you go. There's the comparison between the two. Let me show you each. Warncliffe style, both have a hollow grind on them. Uh, if you are the type of person who tends to break a tip on a knife, uh, the worn is probably going to be a better choice for you. Also, if you tend to like to do pick kind of cuts in your daily routine, uh, the worn style is really cool at that as well. And not having a finger guard right here, this is also going to be good for doing light chopping, kind of pairing duties, that kind of thing as well. Uh, so if you like picking at things and then cutting up an apple and eating it in admiration of yourself and your cool work that you do, Warncliffe is the way to go right there. So Astro Green G10 is something else. If you're in the habit of losing your knives, well, that's a solution for you right there. But don't think you can't pick with this bad boy right here either. It's freaking surgical. Really cool vintage linen my card on that right there. The hollow grind, just absolutely beautiful. Really cool little everyday carry knife right there with a long, lean, sexy, and slicey blade. Now you can have a little bit more of that uh, exclusive mustard micarta on what is probably going to be your most used kitchen knife that you have in your collection. This is the four and a half inch utility. You see it's rocking the hollow grind there. Ground on both sides. Sometimes Josh says the chisel grinds or single size grinds as you saw on uh, some of his kitchen knives. I've actually got one to show you coming up. Uh, but this one has the grind on both sides, so it's going to be ambidextrous for you. 
And uh, this thing is absolutely surgical. And a four and a half inch utility in the kitchen, it will be your most used knife. And the price point on these is fantastic. So I'd be surprised if you didn't want to pick one of these up, especially with that cool mustard micarta right there that's exclusive that you can't get anywhere else. Really cool knife. And that single side grind is going to be in the form of this eight inch Nakiri traditional Japanese style, but definitely not traditional Japanese made as far as this has the full tang on the handle, exposed tang more like Western knives have, uh, which I'm actually a big fan of because it, it makes the balance a lot nicer. So like this one balances out. Uh, right in front of the Ricasso right there, which is great for a knife that length. And one thing that you're going to notice immediately is what is going on with this grind. Well, it's not exactly a grind on this side. So this is a single side grind like what I talked about before uh, with Josh's design. So this is a hollow grind on this side uh, starting about midway down. But on the back side, it's not, it does not have a primary grind. What you're actually seeing right here is more of a fuller. So it's more of material being removed from the center. Now this does a couple different things. It makes it lighter, obviously, because you're removing some steel, which keeps your balance point from being too front heavy, as you can see there, uh, which is a nice touch. But what's really nice about it is when you're cutting things, it won't stick to this side of the blade this gives this more of a uh, chance for the material to release away as you're cutting it and obviously not a full you know quote unquote chisel grind technically because he does have a sharpened uh, secondary edge on this side which i prefer uh, it's a lot easier to keep it uh, nice and sharp when you have um, you can do kind of even strokes on a sharpening steel or whatnot um, so I dig that. I like that a lot better. I like the release of this, this fuller is going to provide on this side. Now this is going to be more of a right-handed knife because the grind is on the right-hand side. So just be aware of that. And uh, simple, no nonsense, white micarta on the handle. And uh, you have got a utilitarian dream in the kitchen right there with that edge knife works. Nakiri, absolutely cool, cool knife. As are most of what Josh is, Josh is doing. I mean, it's just blowing me away with the variety and uh, the different approach that he's taken to some of these knives, which I'm super happy to be able to put on Fiddleback Friday and share with you. So that is the Nakiri. These are the knives for Fiddleback Friday. Hey, thanks for sticking around through the in hand and all the extra silliness today, of course. Now, if you want to know about how to go about getting one of these amazing knives, we make it pretty simple. So you go to fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday. That's where these post up Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But you'll want to be a little bit early. It's not enough to put it in your shopping cart. You have to be the first person to complete the entire checkout process first to get that knife to show up in your mailbox next week instead of someone else's. Now, if you need a little bit more information uh, to make that informed decision, we make that pretty easy too. Every Thursday-ish, but by Friday morning on fiddlebackforge.com slash preview, uh, we post up a photo preview, now with an extra photo, mind you. Uh, so a total of three nice photos, uh, all the specs pricing of each knife that we're putting up uh, on Fiddleback Friday. And if you sign up for the newsletter while you're there, we will deliver that directly to your inbox and save you the trouble of even going to the website and you'll get to check it out and see the preview and all the knives coming up right from your inbox. Pretty doggone simple. Hey, appreciate you hanging around. Life's too short to carry an ugly knife. I hope we helped you with that issue this week. And if not, we'll be here next week as well. So make sure you subscribe. And if you saw anything you like, drop us a like. It helps the channel out a lot. And hey, I really enjoyed all the engagement last week with all the comments uh, from the Blade Forum fiasco. So hey, drop me some comments uh, if you got any questions or comments about any of the knives or any comments or questions about anything else. We'll help you out. See you next week.